Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanish away. See in this place our fears and our dreamings. Brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Come to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearns for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly, Give us the courage to enter the soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And I am with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, welcome to this celebration of the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We continue to listen to Christ teach us through his parables. We learn today about the weeds and the wheat. And so, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take account of the field of our hearts, seeing both the, weed and the, the wheat and the weeds, giving thanks to God for the wheat and asking forgiveness for the weeds. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most greatest fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you, Lord, whose care is for all people, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly. For your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you despair all. For you show your strength when people doubt the completeness of your power and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. Although you are sovereign in strength, you judge with mildness, and with great forbearance you govern us, for you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works you have taught your people that the righteous must be kind, and you have filled your children with good hope, because you give repentance for sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <clears throat> the responsorial song. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do marvelous things. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. But you, O Lord, are God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Blessed are you, Father.
Father, Lord of heaven and earth, you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds a parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned but gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So if you were here for Mass uh, last Sunday, I explained why Jesus speaks in parables. And I was saying how he speaks in parables because he's explaining something to us that is beyond our our human reason, a mystery too big to comprehend it in its fullness. And so he tells us these stories that are meant to be grappled with, that are meant to be wrestled with, are really meant to be entered into and then looked at from all different angles because they're so full, they're so rich that they're saying many different things. And so, for instance, in the Gospel of today, you know, Christ gives uh, an explanation because his disciples are perplexed because they're stubborn of head and heart and they haven't received the Holy Spirit yet. So he has to explain, you know, little by little. And so the explanation that he gives is to look at this parable in the context of the whole world. The field is the world. The good wheat is 
are the, the sons and daughters of the kingdom, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, those who are in communion with Satan through their sin, those who choose to do sin and evil, selfishness, instead of doing the will of the Father, instead of following Christ, instead of allowing His seed to grow up in them. But what that doesn't explain, really, is why. I mean, in the parable, the master of the household says, well, no, leave the weeds because you risk to damage the wheat when you pull up the weeds, so just leave it for now. But it doesn't give a full explanation of, well, why would that hurt the wheat? From ancient, ancient times, the question has always been, you know, why is there evil in the world? Or even better, why does God allow evil in the world? If He is all good, and He is all powerful, then why does evil exist? It's been one of those philosophical problems that has uh, touched the hearts and minds of many philosophers and theologians, most especially St. Augustine. And the answer to that is, on one hand, freedom. God gave us freedom as a sacred gift that He'll never take away, that even He Himself will never trespass over the borders that He Himself has set for our freedom. He respects our freedom. And so He allows us to choose evil, to do evil. He allows us that freedom. Because He wants us to choose good. He wants us to freely enter into a relationship with Him. Because He wants us to love. And there is no love without freedom. And so if you think of why that could damage the wheat, if He just decided, let's just take out all the evil people of the world. Well, that's even very hard to judge, isn't it? Who is actually, you know, through and through evil. We don't know what fruit is being produced in us just yet. But imagine that God just took all of the evil people away, let's say. The people who have maybe not been baptized. The people who, you know, don't go to church. Well, don't all of us know many people who, sure, don't go to church, who don't follow the commandments, Maybe some people in our lives, maybe even sons and daughters who, yeah, even do, let's say, evil things. But we still love them. And we still carry hope for them. And we haven't given up on them yet. If we haven't given up on them, you can be sure who our Father who is holy and perfect hasn't given up on them. So imagine if they were taken away from us. We, ourselves, would probably view God as being quite angry and wrathful, vengeful, even evil himself. And perhaps our hearts would be turned against the Father because we don't understand his judgments. We don't understand why he would do such a thing. But then we also need to keep in mind that it's precisely through the difficulties it's precisely through the battle against evil, the battle against temptation, the battle against the sin in our own hearts that help us to grow in virtue, that help us to grow in patience, that draws even greater love out of us. For as Christ says elsewhere in the Gospel, if you love only those who love you, what merit is there in that? But it's precisely the people who challenge us, who draw even greater love out of us. And so these are some of the explanations that we can, we can understand for why God allows the weeds to grow alongside of the wheat until the end of time. But now, let's look from a different angle. We see the field 
as the world. Well, let us see the field as our hearts. That is actually one way that we should read almost the entirety of Scripture. Is that Scripture is always teaching us something about the world in general. Something about history. Something about you know, the history of salvation. But then, at every point in the, in the Scriptures, we're also meant to look, okay, well, what is that saying about me? What is that telling me in, the, in my relationship with God and my part in the history of salvation? And so we see that our heart is also the field. And that within our hearts, we both have wheat and we have weeds. Even if we don't like to admit the weeds, trust me, they're there. <laughs> At least they are in my heart. And the problem that we so often run into is that we tend to focus on the weeds. How often do we focus on all the negative parts of ourselves? The things that we don't like, the things that we're ashamed of. We would like to get rid of all of our weaknesses. We would like to be more patient instead of being as impatient as we are. And so in this parable, the Master, the Son of God, Jesus Christ is telling us, don't focus on the weeds. If you focus on the weeds and seek only to uproot that which you judge to be evil, you risk to damage the wheat. Now, that may seem strange because you may think, well, no, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to root out sin in our lives. If I root out all the sin in my life, well then, you know, I'll be a good Christian. <coughs> well, wait a second. Is being a good Christian simply not sinning? No. Being a Christian is about recognizing my sin and rejoicing in the redemption that God has offered me anyways. It is about loving God and loving neighbor. And so focusing on the weeds can hurt the wheat. Well, how do we understand that? Well, if I'm focusing on all those negative things, chances are, if you're anything like me, it's very hard to uproot those weeds anyways. And so what does that bring? It brings discouragement. It brings frustration. Maybe anger. Maybe sadness. And one thing it really brings is narcissism. Self-centeredness. It's all about me and my quest for purity, or moral perfection, or holiness. Well, right there, you've already got an obstacle. And what that has done is made me forget about joy, about peace, about love, about serving my brothers and sisters. Because I'm so focused on my own sin and my own weakness. And so I'm doing no good for myself or anybody else. And if we take a moment, I think we can see that, both in ourselves and in those that we've encountered. Those who tend to focus most on sin and evil are the ones that are just miserable. It makes me miserable. But if we focus on cultivating the wheat, if we focus on increasing our joy because of how good our God is and how great the gifts that He's given us are, if we seek more to go out to serve our brothers and sisters, to spread love, to build up the kingdom, well, the more we increase the good, the more we increase virtue, the evil will automatically decrease. There won't be enough room left for the weeds. So this is the lesson that we need to take away from this parable today. We are called to cultivate our hearts, to focus on the wheat, focus on building up the wheat in our lives so that we may produce fruit, 
so that we may truly become children of the kingdom. Even in the midst of this world that is broken and full of evil and sin and difficulties. Focus on the wheat, not on the weeds. Focus on the wheat and allow God to take care of the weeds in His time. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now let us turn to our Heavenly Father and offer to Him all of our prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray that he may be guided and protected by the Holy Spirit. We pray for all of our brothers and sisters scattered throughout the world. We pray that the Lord may increase the wheat in our midst, that He may take care of the weeds, so that we may become greater witnesses to the gospel in our day. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for Bishop Anthony, for Bishop Ryan, for the Archdiocese of Halifax, Yarmouth. We pray for an increase in vocations to priesthood and religious life, that men and women may answer the call to lay down their lives at certain service of the kingdom. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our government leaders, we pray for health officials, we pray for all of those in roles of service to the greater community. We ask that the Holy Spirit may be their wisdom and guide. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and for the suffering, especially those who are alone at this time those who do not have the gift of faith to carry them through this difficulty. We pray that the Lord may be in their midst, that he may bring them healing and strength. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who have died. We pray for those who have no one to pray for them. We ask that the Lord may show them his mercy and welcome them with joy into his heavenly kingdom. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your family, your children who you have gathered together in your name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the sisters of the Church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, Accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants, and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is Christ and Christ. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabao, Plenisum Celi et Terra, Gloria to Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine domini. Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving his holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis and St. Clair, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Anthony our Bishop, Brian our Coadjutor, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Uh -huh. 
Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, says the Lord. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door to me, I will enter his house and dine with him, and he with me. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A little update on Father Roberto. He went into Gemelli Hospital uh, yesterday, and so he started his uh, pre-op treatment in preparation for his surgery that has now been moved until Tuesday. So he should be going in for surgery uh, on Tuesday, July 21st. And so I thank you for all of your prayers. He thanks you for all of your prayers. I did get a chance to talk to him very quickly before he went in. I told him that so many people were praying for him, and he is humbled, and he is grateful, and he sends his love and his thanks. And so please continue to pray for him, and so with this prayer to Our Lady, let us entrust him and all of our petitions into her loving arms. Ave Maria, gratia plena. Dominus tecum, benedicta tu, in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus entris tui, Iesus. Santa Maria, Mater Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Um.